Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Kit. Today we have some interesting updates from the folks at Blender. So the last time we talked about hair, we did look at hair for Blender 3.2, the alpha. That didn't make it to Blender 3.2, the final build. But today we're getting some updates, which is quite promising for Blender 3.3. So for those who would like to try this out, you need to go all the way to blender.org, scroll all the way down, click on download Blender, go down, click on download Blender Experimental, and don't download anyone here. You need to go over to the branch section, and right here is where you're going to find the temporary hair patches 33. And the patches which we're looking at are tools that are now available. Now there's a couple of changes which is pretty interesting and that is what we're going to explore. So once you download this and unzip it and fire this up, you don't need to do anything. You can just simply start working with the hair automatically. So the first thing which I'm going to explain to you guys or show you guys is a little bit of a bug which there is a fix around which we're going to talk about later. So if we simply hold down shift and tap 4 on the keyboard and subdivide this, actually before we even talk about the hair, if you right click right now, you would notice that we have the shade auto smooth, which simply means that anything that you have within your scene automatically gets smooth shaded every single time. So once you have this going, you can go ahead and apply this. So let's just go ahead and apply that. Hold on shift tap A on the keyboard with this object selected and throw in a random hair. So with a random hair right here, if you go over to the render section, let's look at that. In Eevee, you get to see it. If you go over to the render section in cycles, you see it. Now we explained how you can work around this, but then there is a tiny problem. Now the tiny problem that you would face if you choose to work with this right now is if you have this object selected, you hold down shift tap in on the keyboard and then you choose to put an empty head on this and you move over to where you have your sculpt mode and you choose to add hair particles. So I'm just gonna add some hair around here. If we jump all the way out of this and take a look at this in cycles, nothing. But if you switch over to Eevee, you get to find something. So there's a workaround which we're gonna talk about. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the tools that are now available. So with what we have here, we're just gonna go ahead and hold on Shift, tap A on the keyboard and throw in an empty hair. If you have this object selected and you go over to your sculpt mode, you notice we have more tools. So at this point, if you'd like to add more, curves or you know more counts you can do that you can now turn on the front face only so if you have that selected if you tap f on the keyboard you can simply paint across your model now this makes a lot of sense so you don't have all of that intersections that goes into the mesh and you can now also go ahead and use the comb tool to do all of those combing now the comb tool was also available in the previous one but this just looks a bit more satisfying to work with so with your mirror tool you can mirror things apart so in this case, we can drop this down. Let's say we'll drop this down to uh, maybe one, for example, and we can position that there. And with this position, we can now go ahead and comb this however we want. Now, remember that we're just dropping one point and we're combing this however we want. We can also do multiple points and, and also comb them just exactly how we would like them to be. Now, once we have this comb, we can now simply click on the add button. And with the add button, if you click down here, you can now interpolate between length shape and points count. So if you like the lens to be a bit more or you want the points to be a bit more, you can make changes. But if you just want to simply interpolate all three, you can also go ahead and have that. And because we already have symmetry, you would notice that as we play through this, we are simply getting that to work. And this makes sense because at any point in time, you like to also do the very same thing across. You can also have these ones to work exactly how you want. Now, we've also taken a look at the deletes. We've seen the snake hook, which is pretty nice. And uh, one thing which I would mention is in some cases, mirroring may not work. I mean, as much as I know, in some cases, the mirroring might not work if you're using the sphere. You might need to use the projector to actually get them to work. But in this case, you know, we are just going to go ahead and play with this and you can see that. And of course, we have some more brushes, which is like the pinch, for example. So with a pinch, you can pinch parts together which is also really nice. So you can pinch parts together if this is what you're going for. If you like to smooth some parts, you can also go in and use the smoothing tool. And we have the puffing, which is really nice. So this is for like blowing the hair a little bit upward. So you can puff some things if you want. If you like to also play with the density, you can also do this. I particularly love this icon right here. And with the density, you can go ahead and do all of this. All right, so you can now notice that even though we have this turned on, the density thing isn't working, you need to go over to projector to actually get that to work. Next thing which we might need to do, because you notice that as we're using this density tool, we are not getting 
the alignment all right so if we simply do this we're not getting exactly what we want it's not following the curve pattern so what we can do now is to go over to the curve shape and turn on length shape and also point count so in that way once we have that going let's drop this a little bit down once we have that going we can now use the density to add more density across the model so this is just one of those cool ways that you can now use this to start making very nice hair on your models. Now with this here, you can also use the sliding tool to sort of move the hair wherever you want. So you can use this to move the hair to positions where you want. And this is also something that might come in very handy depending on what you're trying to create. And with, you know, having the pinch tool, you can of course go ahead and pinch things together and get something even way cleaner to work with. And with all of these tools, you can potentially start making some very nice hair for a model. Now, something which is not quite here is dynamics, but we're going to talk about the entire roadmap as we proceed. So how you get to render, which is one thing I believe lots of you guys would want to do, is pretty simple. So if we go ahead and take a look, let's actually take a look at cycles, all right? So if we hit the cycles right now, you notice we don't have anything rendering. If we switch this over to Eevee, you would see that we have this very nice, you know, character-like model rendering. So the hair looks pretty cool. And for you to be able to take advantage of cycles to get this hair to render is also very simple. So you need to have this object selected and you need to throw in a geometry node. So with a geometry node right here, what we may want to do is very, very easy. First things is click, drag out, and then we need to convert the curves to mesh. This might actually take a toll on your PC depending on what you're doing. So curve to mesh. And once we have that there, we can click, convert the curve to mesh, drop that right in and wire this right there. So automatically you can see that we have all of these converted and they look pretty nice. Now, if you go over and take a look at this in cycles, you would notice that, you know, it starts rendering. And since we're using the geometry node, what we would like to do is to run a simple cycle right here as the profiling curve that will drive the entire mesh. And we might want to drop this down to something like 0.001. Once you have this ready, the next thing which you may want to do is take a look at what it simply looks like in cycles. And once we run this in cycles, you would notice that our materials are gone because we are driving this through the geometry node. So to get your materials in, you can just simply go ahead and set the material. So we can say set material, sorry, set material. And we can set the material and the material which we have is just this very one. And we can wire this all the way up there. And this way you can now add materials to your hair and you can control this however you want. And like I mentioned earlier, depending on what you're doing, these might also take a toll on your PC since it's simply calculating for individual curves. So this is a little bit of a milestone from what we had in the previous iteration so for those who are thinking about working with this of course you can you can definitely do some very nice and impressive thing and the best part is with all of these tools right now i mean specifically for eevee you can easily make hair style them how you want and get some very brilliant results you can choose to start with anything at this point so if you're thinking about starting with a random one or simply just making yours you can do that. Some other nice and cool improvement that I love about this particular new set of tools is the ease of customization. So depending on what you're trying to create, you can simply customize this to your liking and get some very brilliant results. There's a couple of nice things that you can work with that just make sense. So one of them is the distribution. So we've seen the distribution, you know, we talked about it earlier. So if I simply click on the curve, which I'm using for the mustache, what we can do is we can go over here, go to the sculpting section with the distribution selected, we can set a minimum distance. Now this is just beautiful. So at this point, what we have is we have a brush size that much, let's reduce that brush size. And if we simply do this, you would see what we are getting. And this is making sense because at several times you might want to have some distance in the hair, maybe you're making like chest hair, for example, places where hair is very sparse. You can put the distance and you can use this. Let's actually increase this a bit. So you can use this to get that kind of hair. Another nice thing is the selection. So I know I didn't talk about this one earlier, but the selection is a very, very nice set of, uh, it's a very nice tool to see that we now have here. So if I tap F on the keyboard, increase the brush size, we can now use this to select parts. So I'm just going to go ahead and say none. So nothing is selected. 
And at this point, if I use this, let's uh, make sure that we're looking at just this one. If I use this, we can make some selection. It is a little bit off, so you can't really see, but if I use that, we can make that selection. And with that selection there, we can now use the brush tool, tap F on the keyboard to increase the brush size. We can now use this to only control that part. So parts like this that are not selected cannot be used. So that selection is more like a masking tool. So these parts, we can move them, but these parts, I don't know if it's, you know, sort of clear for you guys to see what parts are selected or not. You can move these parts, but these parts you cannot, all right? So you can't move this part. I mean, even if you choose to use the projected, you can't use this part. If you go over to select and say select all, at this point, you can now do all of that stuff. And uh, I guess maybe a much more visually appealing look to sort of tell what parts are selected might be better. Maybe a waiting sort of um, look the blue and red one might look very, very nice. One thing which I was also trying to work with is this. Like if you go over to your texture, I was trying to see if with the texture tool, if we can get some stuff. I didn't really see any noticeable difference with what we had without the texture. And uh, that is also something I would love to see in subsequent updates. So the sliding tool looks cool. The puffing tool, maybe the icon needs to be changed a bit. The smoothing tool looks nice, which is uh, also very cool. And overall, this is a very wonderful tool for you guys to explore. Right now, it is currently available as a branch. So if you're thinking about exploring this, you might also want to go ahead and take a look at the link in the description and check it out. Now we've covered the new hair system before, and we talked about, you know, how you can work with this with the geometry node and other stuff. So just in case you're thinking about working with that or checking that video out, link to that is gonna be in the description. At the same time, you might want to consider looking at the roadmap because it seems like hair dynamics will be coming to this tool later in the coming updates. So that's about it. For those who like to take a look at all of these things that I've just talked about, links to this is gonna be in the description, so do well to check it out. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.